is week 11 and 12 uh, chapter. It is chapter 7, CSF4203, Telecom and One Security. Chapter 7, which is covering week, week 11 and 12, securing site-to-site -site connectivity. So in this chapter, we are going to cover again VPNs, but using the Cisco or Last time, remember, we used it using the, the, the book yeah. PowerPoints. So it's many similarities are here. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, so VPN. So VPNs are used to create an end-to-end -end private network connection over third-party networks, such as internet or extranet, to secure it. Okay? I told you before, internet was there everyone was happy but the problem it was not secure especially if you are doing you want to use it for banking to access your intranet at work so they came up with the vpn to implement vpn a vpn gateway is necessary and this vpn could be a router a firewall or a Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance, ASA. Okay? Adaptive Security Appliance. All right? So here you have headquarter, and then you have the types of VPN. Here you have business partner with a Cisco router, or you have a regional office with a Cisco ASA firewall, or if you are at home or uh, one individual or a small office, home office, you can use a Cisco router, okay, to access the VPN. Mobile worker with Cisco AnyConnect. You know the Cisco AnyConnect software application? You can use it for VPN. Even here, some teachers who had to travel and they need to access, collaborate, the we will the college will provide them with vpn otherwise they cannot yeah they cannot conduct the class from outside yes, I tried to, to join. student is different no, right. no, even right. for even for yeah, students it's, ah, it's blocked huh yes yeah you have to go through vpn you have to go through vpn you are right okay so i yeah and you can go talk to it i need vpn they will give you yeah, yeah, they have, they have special VPN configuration, of course. Not anyone can download the VPN and, no, you have to have some configuration. So with side-to-side -side VPN, this is, here it is, this is the one that needs most configuration. Here you are connecting entire network to each other, two LANs together. This is what we will do in the lab, inshallah, VPN lab. So here we will have internal hosts have no knowledge that a VPN exists. So it's transparent for the hosts. It created when devices on both sides of the VPN connection are aware of the VPN configuration in advance. Okay. End hosts send and receive normal TCP IP traffic through a VPN gateway. All right. The VPN gateway is responsible for encapsulating and encrypting outbound traffic for all traffic from a particular site. Okay. This is done through the VPN. So the VPN will encrypt the traffic to make it secure. Okay. The VPN gateway then sends it through a VPN tunnel. So everything is secured and sent through the tunnel over the internet to appear VPN gateway at the target site. But do you think that the traffic going through the, the tunnel will be faster or slower than the normal traffic? There will be some, there will be some delay, yes. There will be some delay. That's why you don't need to send everything through the tunnel, only the things that you want to encrypt. Don't send everything through the tunnel, the VPN, okay? Here we have a side-to-side -side VPN. So here you have your uh, VPN terminating device. You have the side-to-side -side, uh, VPN connection here. Okay, from this network and this network. For the knowledge, 
for the not for the client it is transparent the, the, the client doesn't and yani it doesn't care or doesn't know even what is how is the traffic is going he knows that I will receive my response I can access the other network Remote access VPNs used to connect individual hosts that must access their company network securely over the internet. There are two primary methods for deploying remote access VPNs, secure socket <laughs> layers, and IP security. These are the two methods we discussed even in the previous PowerPoint. The type of VPN method is based on the access requirements of the users and organizations IT processes. Both of them offer access to virtually any network application or resource. Yani SSL or IPsec, they are both capable. The term IPsec is transparent, right? Yes, yes, both of them. Yeah. Yes, they are. For the end user, it's transparent. The VPN is transparent. You log in, like if you are sitting on your device here okay you might only sense the delay there is a little delay okay small delay so here a remote access vpn okay so here the client initiates vpn connection cisco ssl vpn provides remote access by using a web browser and the web browser native SSL encryption. So this one is based, web-based, okay, web-based. It can provide remote access using the Cisco AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client software, okay? But can you use this for a big LAN? Of course not, okay, all right. Cisco AnyConnect is for a, for a remote user, not for a LAN, okay, for a remote user. Or you can use user computer with browser. So these are both solutions for individual or commuter. And someone who is on the go, traveling all the time, he wants to access VPN, he can go through the web browser, the computer with web browser and the Cisco AnyConnect mobility client. You will, when you install it, you will get, that's the one they install here, some software like this, VPN client, okay? So by Cisco, they have Cisco AnyConnect secure mobility client. <clears throat> the IPsec remote access. So here we have the easy VPN, you have the tunnel, all the traffic is going through the tunnel, the interested traffic, going to the corporate router and then to the head corporate headquarters servers. Okay. The Cisco Easy VPN negotiates tunnel parameters, establishes tunnel according to set parameters, authenticates users by usernames, group names, and passwords manages security keys for encryption and decryption, authenticates, encrypts, and decrypts data through a tunnel. Don't worry, we will do this in the lab. So you will see all these steps, okay? We'll do a LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPN. <coughs> IPsec, here we have information from a private network is securely transported over a public network or the internet. It forms a virtual network instead of using a dedicated layer two connection. And you don't need to use a PPP connection and pay so much money for it and subscription, no, you just use the internet, but you install a good VPN. To remain private, the traffic is encrypted to keep the data confidential. Okay? And these are the different types of connection. We already mentioned we have the 
uh, ASA firewall or we have the Soho with a Cisco router or we have the Cisco AnyConnect for the mobile worker, all right? Or if you have business, land to land, you use business partner with a Cisco router or if you have a regional office with a Cisco ASA firewall. Of course, the firewall will provide more, more features, okay, for protection, especially for banks. Okay, these are the characteristics or the services of IPsec, confidentiality by encryption. It will encrypt the data before transmitting, integrity, it will verify that the data has not been tampered with or changed. Okay. If the tampering is detected, packet is dropped. Also, it will provide the authentication by verifying the identity of the source of the data is sent and ensure that the connection is made with the desired communication partner uh, IPsec uses IKE or Internet Key Exchange. Did you study yeah. this in crypto? Crypto, crypto. You studied some of these. Uh, did you study IPsec there or Internet Key Exchange? No. Okay. okay, no problem. To authenticate users and devices that can carry out communication independently. The anti-replay protection detect and reject replayed packets and helps prevent spoofing. Okay, that's also a very important feature of IPC. So I can see it's very secure and it's well protected. Okay, it was very big thing when they invented VPN and yeah. IPC. It was very important thing, and this is not very long time ago. Yani. We are just yani, after the internet was developed then they started thinking about security so ipsec provides cia confidentiality integrity and authentication three of these are already secured the ipsec authentication of course i we already mentioned this ipsec vpn support authentication Device on the other end of the VPN tunnel must be authenticated before the communication path is considered secure. We do peer authentications, so the both routers are peered. Okay. There are two peer authentication methods, PSK and RSA. PSK is a secret key shared between the two parties using a secure channel before it needs to be used. A PSK is entered into each peer manually and is used to authenticate the peer. We already mentioned, if you remember in the previous PowerPoint, that this is used for small configuration. Why? Because this is manually. <laughs> the second one, RSA, is dynamic. Here we are using di digital certificates are exchanged to authenticate peers. Local device derives a hash and encrypt it with its private key. Encrypted hash or digital signature is attached to the message and forwarded to the remote end. So this is more efficient for big companies. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, you can say that. Okay, so this is the summary. Please spend one minute reading the summary. Have a look at the summary, please. Any questions about this chapter? <laughs> 